so it is 8 a.m. and we have made it to Athens. We are on our way to Venice and we're very lucky to be on this flight because this morning, so we woke up at like 3 a.m. Mm. and at 4 a.m. our driver was supposed to take us to the airport and then he wasn't there at 4 a.m. So about 10 past 4 we called him. I was panicking by this point because I am Mr. Prompt. <laughs> <laughs> so I called him and he picked up and he was just like Hello! Good, good morning! <laughs> and honestly, this Clearly guy... Clearly asleep. <laughs> anyway, we made, it, we made the flight to, from Paros with like 15 minutes to spare which was fine because the airport is actually so tiny like there was only one check-in lane and there was only one gate. I think this is why he wasn't worried. He's like, as long as I get you in the vicinity of this airport yeah. you're getting on the flight. <laughs> But I didn't know that and it was it was very annoying. Anyway, we made that flight, we've just come to Athens now. Very tired. Got a second flight from Athens to Venice. Yeah. And we don't know how we're getting to the airport because I didn't realise that Venice Airport is actually one hour from Venice, the place that we all know. Yes. So we've got to figure that out now. So we should probably put the phone the camera down. Yeah, we should figure that start out. Start Googling this quickly actually. <laughs> the best way to get to our hotel is by a water taxi. From where? The airport? Seems so. No. Surely that's not a thing. <laughs> I want to call the hotel. Oh yeah, please do. We're using Tripsy for all of our planning. It is amazing. If you haven't tried this app, go check it out. Basically, whenever you get a confirmation from like, say, a flight, a hotel, a restaurant booking, um, a concert ticket, anything, you just email it into your dedicated Tripsy email address and then it compiles the itinerary for you. So pretty much everything we've planned for this whole holiday is in one app. So when, when we go to a hotel or go to, we're gonna go see Mika later this month, um, whatever you're doing, you just open Tripsy and it will show you what's next in your agenda and you just show the person and it's, it's brilliant. It's absolutely amazing. I can't recommend it enough. There's a lot of talk about buses. <laughs> no, I ain't doing that. That's how you, if you've not seen the movie Taken, <laughs> I'm not going to get taken when you're there. I might. <laughs> a body like mine is hot property on the black market. <laughs> then am I going to have to be Liam Neeson? <laughs> I have a very special set of Instagram skills. <laughs> I will find you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I am Mrs. Iglesias. <laughs> With the first... So, sorry, with the first option, with the water taxi, is that something we can just go get there or do we have to pre-book? Oh, wonderful. Okay, perfect. Um, you can get a private water taxi. Yeah. Um, 140 euros, takes about half an hour and you go directly to the hotel and you don't have to pre-book that. You can just get them at the airport whenever you arrive. That's... Um, really? Yeah. Let's hope they got life jackets. <laughs> For some reason, I think we land in like an hour and a half, so 9.30. Mm -hmm. and, and check in is at 3. Yeah, I would rather check in uh, um, a lot earlier and check out a lot later. Yeah, I think everyone would. <laughs> To Venice, and the first thing I've noticed is the water. It was murky, man. Like, I'll put a clip up. I'm not sure why it's so murky. <sighs> okay, so big recommendation when you come out of Venice Airport, go right to the exit, and then over on the left hand side, there's some booths that will actually arrange a car to the seaport and then a boat to your hotel in Venice. It's a lot easier than trying to get to the port yourself and then trying to book a boat yourself. So Especially if you have the amount of luggage that we're traveling with. Look yeah. at it all stacked up. I don't know why. 99% of this luggage is peers as well. No, it's not. It's 50-50. Stop blaming me. <laughs> thank you. Thank Bye, you so see much. You. Thank we'll see you soon. <laughs> So this is my first time in Venice and I really want to go to the hotel that uh, Angelina Jolie and Johnny Depp went to in the movie The Tourist. So we're going to go there, we actually booked it for lunch. <laughs> Oh my gosh, 
slash our taxi is here. Have a look. <laughs> this is our taxi. This is our refreshment. <laughs> so I'm vlogging with the Leica today. I'm not sure how it's going to go. I feel like I've got to speak up because there's no microphone. It looks stunning. I think you'll be fine. It's just one of those things like with little cameras that don't have uh, a microphone. Sometimes you get that noise, yeah, the yeah. wind. But I think it's going to be fine. It's not very windy. Um, and this boat doesn't exactly go fast. So I think we're going to be good. dress appropriate for a gondola ride. <laughs> you know you don't have to drive it, right? I, I wasn't sure what the go was. I was just trying to dress appropriate. Did you Google gondola wearing outfits? I just saw the guy's hand and I was like, oh, I need to wear stripes. <laughs> to get a taxi to dinner and the lady was like don't just get a taxi to dinner get one and it tours around the entirety of like all the Venice canals so you get to see a lot more so I think that was 140 euro mm. and we got champagne and all that sort of stuff and it was an hour long like boat tour through all of Venice and I think that's really cool like the day that you arrive book that and you can see so much of the city without having to like walk <laughs> I'll be honest, this is the only place where I feel comfortable carrying this around because everyone else is like holding an umbrella or a flag or something. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if in about 10 minutes there would be like 20 people just following behind. <laughs> yeah. So we were pretty reluctant to leave Greece. Like we were so in love with Paros that we were kind of like sad getting on the plane and coming here. But now I'm here, it's like, it is so visually stunning being in Venice. Like all of the buildings are like different colors. They're all so old and rustic. And oh my God, I'm just honestly, I'm so inspired. We booked our hotel kind of not in the middle of like Venice. I don't know what it's called. I'm going to have to look it up for you guys. I think it's called Santa Maria where our hotel is. And at first we thought Santa it was Elena. Santa, Santa Elena. Elena. Okay, right. I thought it was a really weird choice when we first got there, but it turns out that it's a little bit out of town and it's giving us the opportunity to walk through all of these like way less busy areas that aren't overcrowded with tourists. Like look at what I'm looking at right now. Like there isn't a single person in sight. When Pia says out of town, it's literally like nine minutes. But yeah. that nine minute distance between here, where as you can see there's no one, and the center of Venice. The center of Venice, as, as much as it pains me to say, don't go there. It's a nightmare. It's like every major tourist kind of square mile that you have in every city. So in New York it would be Times Square, in uh, Sydney it would be the rocks, and like all those kind of people that just want to sell you little plastic trinkets of the town. Yeah, it's and souvenir it's, stores everywhere. It's like Pickpocket Central, it's just people selling garbage, the food is expensive and bad. Yeah. And then we just, we accidentally booked this hotel. It's an IHD hotel, it's a really nice hotel, but it's out of town. Yeah. Or out of the centre. And it is brilliant. We yeah. are exposed to the actual culture of Venice and also we get to experience a lot of the local restaurants which the locals are at rather than the ones that tourists go to. We've had some amazing meals. Seriously, so I want to show you guys this street that we discovered which turned out to be like the best little discovery of Venice so far. Mm, this is actually it. <laughs> I said to Pia, I don't know where the street is, we're never going to find it again. And then we turn the corner and it's like, ah, here we are. Yeah, I remember the boat. This boat yesterday had fruit all over it, like it was like a little market stall full of fruit and it's just Sunday today so I think they're just closed. Yeah, I've noticed that both fruit markets, I wanted to get a photo of Pia at a fruit market for Instagram 
the other one shut as well. So I suspect yeah. on Sundays it's no a bit fruit more, on Sundays. Yeah, I mean in Australia everything's kind of twenty four seven seven days a week, but yeah, I think Europe take a bit more of a relaxed relaxed attitude. Yeah, exactly. They've got a balanced life. Yeah, <laughs> they need to have their wine time. Obviously. Exactly. Yeah, only fermented fruit on Sundays. <laughs> So that place there, Da Valentino, why can't I say it? Valentino, <laughs> Da Valentino, that was insane. We had lunch there yesterday, highly recommend it. I'll drop a pin because I'm sure there's a lot of places called Valentino around here. Yes. That one was particularly incredible. And then another place just up here, we had dinner the day before. Um, oh, the pizza. The pizza. Oh, it's what dreams are made of, guys. It's what dreams are made of. As soon as we landed, we're like, right, there's three things we need. Pizza, pasta, and Prosecco. <laughs> <laughs> so this street, which is apparently the only street in Venice, when I get to the end of it, I'll find out what it's called. It used to be kind of like not really happening. And then what happened is they put the uh, arts exhibition nearby here and the art museum and now it's turned into this like really cool like full of restaurants heaps of young people heaps of locals eat here and it's probably a street that if you came to venice and you didn't venture this direction you would probably miss out on yeah but it's actually i don't know it's my favorite part of it so far i would say this is the if you're in sydney this would be surrey hills yeah which is the bit that most tourists would probably overlook That's you go right. to bondi and you know, the harbour and be, oh, I've done Sydney, but actually the cool bit would be somewhere like, like Surrey Newtown, Hills. Newtown, Surrey Hills. Yeah, Newtown maybe. Exactly. And this is, this is really great. Loads of locals eating here. The food's incredible and also the food is cheap. Yeah, it's I not think. like tourist prices. No, we had uh, a pizza, a pasta and a Prosecco. <laughs> and uh, I think it came to 78 euro. Yeah, amazing. And it was, it was a lot. It wasn't like small portions. It was really good food Yeah. and a really nice bottle. Oh, here's the restaurant. Honestly, I could go there again. Seriously, me too. I mean, me too. Look at this, guys. I mean, sure it's lunchtime somewhere. <laughs> it's lunchtime here. This restaurant, very, very good. What was it called? Sotto Provo. Sotto Provo. Oh, yeah. yeah, here we go. Highly recommend, guys. Oh, honestly, smelling that pizza just now. Are you hungry? You know it's 1 p.m. We could go get it. <laughs> I mean, I'm right, going to for the vlog, right? <laughs> for the vlog. All right, guys, just for you, we're going to go have some pizza and pasta. If okay. I look fat next week, it's your I'm fault. doing it for you. <laughs> so basically, Venice is like there. The main city is there. If you come away in a easterly direction, you'll get this street. And this street is just all restaurants and bars, and it is cool as. And this is the restaurant we're talking about right here. We're gonna have a little pit stop here and like just take note of the peace we're experiencing right now because later, I know we don't want to, but we're gonna go walk into town and I'm gonna show you guys. Oh, do we have to? I mean, I just wanna show them the contrast between here and over there. Yeah, there's a place that everyone goes it's called the Rialto Bridge, um, which is like the biggest bridge. But I don't think you need to see the biggest bridge because there's bridges everywhere. <laughs> like, I don't care if it's like, I don't care about big bridges. What I don't do you? get is. You never wanna be around something big if you're taking a photo of yourself. That's right. Like if you're taking a photo of a boat, taking a photo of yourself on a big old P&O ferry is not as romantic as being on a little wooden speedboat. Exactly. So get on the little wooden bridge and you yeah. get a better photo. Yeah. That's my helpful tip for the day. <laughs> I should be a tour guide. Yeah, you basically are. It's <laughs> we have been people watching for about an hour. Had a few glasses of wine and now I think we should carry on our little tour yes. of Venice. My left foot has got complete sunburn, blistering sunburn. <laughs> oh no, just your left foot? Yeah, because I'm wearing <laughs> these, Pierre made me buy these stupid shoe, shoes called Birkenstocks, right? Oh my gosh, like Kane complains constantly about how uncomfortable his Birkenstocks are. Yeah. Birkenstocks are like world renowned as no, no. some of the most comfortable shoes you can possibly wear. No. I'm no. walking around in freaking heels all day. Today not so much, today I'm in slides. But he's there complaining about his beautiful Birkenstocks. No, they're not beautiful, for starters. Did you take your shoe off? And secondly, no, they are made of on. wood. Put your shoe back on. They're, They're made, made of wood. Cork is wood, and cork is not as soft as a Nike Air bubble. I tell you that. For, I am in a lot of pain. I have flat feet as well. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this in I the vlog before. The, yeah, I think you mention it quite a lot, actually. I think your it's flat one. feet is one of the main things people know about you, right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why people find it so fascinating. I think a lot of people have flat feet. I think that's why you find Birkenstocks uncomfortable because they have an actual arch. 
I don't where know, your, man. Where your foot arch is supposed to be. I think I'm be. just allergic to bad style. <laughs> this could be the vlog where we just slowly get hammered. <laughs> and then we don't have to bother doing all this walking in the heat. <laughs> you don't want to get up, do you? I am very comfortable under this umbrella, I do have to admit. But I feel like we should show the people a little bit of Venice. They, they can Google it. <laughs> For you guys, we're going to keep this vlog rocking. <laughs> p.m. and I think at 3 p.m. it's actually the hottest time of the day unlike Australia where like it's midday to 2 yeah, I feel like it's like still it's getting hotter here seriously oh I mean I'm not complaining I love it but whew, <laughs> it's hot we leave Australian winter to come to European summer and then all we do is complain about the heat uh, I'm not complaining <laughs> just stating facts I wish I wasn't wearing such a skin tight t-shirt but I guess with muscles this size it's hard to get baggy t-shirts these days. I all your normal t-shirts are now just skin tight aren't Everything they? I wear is just like, you know when Superman puts on his clothes and you can just see every muscle? It's kind of how I feel these days. Honestly I'm surprised you haven't ripped the sleeve. Lady, over there lady. Okay. One cool thing that you can do, which is really nice actually, is take a gondola ride. It's 80 euro which is what, like 130 Australian so it's not cheap, but it is kind of nice to go down the canals and have a look at all the buildings. I mean, the buildings look cool. So, that's something you could do. That is something you could do. Should we do it? I mean... Look, it's cool. Hello. 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 I'm not that fast. Very Guys, this cool. is how you get to the place we're going for dinner. You just this get, is a date night. You rock up on a boat. Yeah, this is date night. Oh, I should probably give you my hand. That would be the gentlemanly thing. Whoa! Thank you, bye-bye. So this is the hotel from the movie The Tourist with Angelina Dolly and Johnny Depp. This is literally the hotel that she stays at and goes and checks in right there. And so there's a beautiful, beautiful restaurant on the terrace here. I think this might be the best restaurant we go to on this trip. I think so too. Like, I think so too. Wild. This I think is schmick. I don't like eating at fancy restaurants. I'm like, I'm, I'm happy with more like a chicken breast and sweet potato. <laughs> this is two different grapes. Ah. <laughs> this is definitely a very beautiful restaurant. Angelina Jolie has walked these steps. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> and we complete it with a cherry tomato sauce. So how does it feel to go to the same place that Angelina Jolie had dinner? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think she got dinner there. She probably had dinner in a trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Buongiorno. 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 Thank you. Grazie. Ah, oh. oh, yes. Thank you. Can I say yes. Don't know why I said that with an accent. <laughs> Whenever anyone Italian talks to Pia, Pia goes, oh yes. She literally drops into an Italian accent and then they start speaking to her in Italian because they're like, well clearly you're Italian. And then she goes, ah, no, no, me not speaking. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, 
I'm stressed. <laughs> We have about 30 minutes before our train leaves, so I thought, you know what, for the vlog, I'll go get some footage on my iPhone, just get some nice B-roll and whatnot. And then I got a little bit nosy, and I thought, oh, I wonder what these trains look like on the inside. So I got on a train, I was like, oh, looks pretty good, pretty good, this is gonna be nice. And then I heard beeping, and then I realized that the doors were shutting, and I was on a train, I didn't know where this train was going, I didn't know what, By himself. All, oh, all my bags are here, all our bags are here, Pierre's still here, and I just literally left for like, two minutes to go and get some, some B-roll. I jumped off this train. Imagine if you got stuck on the train and then you just called me and you're like, I'm babe. going to Switzerland. <laughs> the cool thing about booking online is you can choose your seat and like kind of your coach class. Um, and first class was like 40 euros. So it wasn't even too bad. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it'd be quite nice. I mean, it's the same as a plane. Look. Yeah. It's literally, the same. And I think I got food. Does that mean they serve food? Well, there's something about, on my ticket, there was something about restaurant. Or like, I mean, look, I can't read it, it's all in Italian, but I can see that there's like a little knife and fork symbol. And we've got power. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, hang on. We have power here as well. USB. It's aircon. Yeah, this is great. Two and a half hours on here, and we'll end up in Milan. I'm going to download a speed app to see how fast we're going. Just hit 180 kilometers an hour. 